Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Alathrix, and of course, a welcome to a brand new full playthrough. Today, we're going to be testing out the new DLC, the Aquatic Species Pack, along with the brand new patch, the 3.2 patch, where lots has changed, and I'll be covering that as we go with the game itself. But first, let's take a look-see at our empire and the DLC itself. The Aquatics DLC, of course, is not really a surprise, all about the ocean worlds and the denizens within. Hey everyone, Future Lathrix here very briefly, just because Past Lathrix completely ignored two separate things with the DLC, which he really should have mentioned. Now, there is two new origins with the, the DLC, the Ocean Paradise and the Here Be Dragons. We are going with the Ocean Paradise in this run, but there is also this, because I am definitely going to be checking this out in a future playthrough, because you start off with a space dragon roaming your home system. The dragon may protect you from harm, but beware its wrath should you displease it. So we do have that, and of course, we have all the new appearances, which I hardly even looked at. We're going with these lovely, dis just interesting looking fellows here, the slimy boys, but then we also have a whole plethora of others. And honestly, I'm not too sure which one I prefer. I've purposely gone with this one because I've not seen anyone go with this one just yet. Look how creepy that is. I do like this fellow. But yeah, all of these are the new ones with the new DLC. Tell me which one you prefer for the future runs. Anyway, back to past Lathrix. Still future Lathrix here, even more future Lathrix than both of the other future Lathrixes who are going to be in this clip, but <laughs> it turns out I also forgot to mention one of the main goals of this run is to turn every world into an ocean world. It was the goal going in, and for some reason I just didn't mention it for like the first 20 minutes of recording, so... That's another goal! Turn every single world into an ocean world using the new Colossus, which can turn worlds into ocean worlds by flooding them and drowning the people on the worlds. Okay, back to past Lathrix before future Lathrix, who's more future than the previous future Lathrix, but not as future as me. And such the empire I've gone with is Ocean's Reach. This is an empire all about trying to eke out as much joy from life as possible before their very, very quick demise. A very short lifespan, this species have very limited amount of sense. They have only just barely sight. They have only just barely the sense of touch. They originally come from the very depths of this massive size 30 ocean planet. And only recently with the recent technological boom have they been able to go more towards the surface where now they see all the shiny and the bright and the beautiful trying to get as much as that as possible they are fanatic xenophile almost completely because of the trade value they want to find as many shiny things and hoard them as possible they are also authoritarian since they are an empire they are a despotic empire with an empress because down in the depths although this was a fantastic food rich world it wasn't exactly great for other materials and as such, they've had to scrape everything together and make sure everything was distributed according to the Empress. Everything has to be in order. But now, now they're here, they want everything for themselves. So, first of all, they are pleasure seekers. This is an older Civic, one that I've simply never used before, at least on a full playthrough. This means that entertainers give you pop growth and servants give you amenities. And this is an empire which probably really really want servants. It also gives the decadent lifestyle which this species will be craving since they need so much to get so little stimulus. And now for the new civic, the Anglers. Adept at utilising nature's bounty, this society provides itself a stable influx of subsistence and economic value. On ocean worlds, agricultural districts are uncapped. On wet worlds, farmers are replaced by anglers and pearl divers. Anglers provide eight food and two trade value, which is loads for one job. And pearl divers provide three consumer goods and two trade value. Yeah, the trade value is going to be really, really important here, and as you can probably tell, what we want to do by the end of this run is convert every single world into an ocean world, which can be done a little bit more efficiently with a special Colossus and one of the Ascensions. Now, uh, one of the other new civics I was tempted by, which required xenophobic, so I didn't go with it, is, if I can find it, Pompous Purists. Extra trust growth and extra envoys, but you can only have any diplomacy with those who you talk to first. So you have to have everything manually done by you, which actually is pretty good for two extra envoys and that extra, tr that extra trust growth. I'll probably be going with that 
in the future. But this is the basic setup for Ocean's Reach. Now, with Origins, we have Ocean Paradise, as I mentioned before. This gives us a 30 size food world, which increases happiness, pop growth, speed, and output. But the guaranteed um, habitable worlds nearby are now frozen, which obviously isn't particularly useful for us. Since its birth, this civilization has enjoyed peace in a generous environment with no natural enemies, enabling unhindered growth and opulence. Simply a lack of resources in the very deep before now, of course, we have resurfaced and have very quickly gone to space itself. Expansion is key. As for the species itself, they are first of all aquatic. This species is perfectly adapted to living in the depths of the ocean, however on dry land it is like a fish out of water. Ocean habitability plus 20%, housing usage minus 10% on ocean worlds, and food, energy and mineral output on ocean worlds is increased by 10%. Which is pretty lovely, and actually kind of makes me wish I wasn't going down a purely trade value kind of empire, but... Still going to be useful even without. Housing usage on non-wet worlds is increased and habitability is decreased. We need to stay on wet worlds and once we get the hydrocentric ascension perk, it makes this more powerful and also amplifies the negatives. So that's what we're going with. We are repugnant because of course we are. We are thrifty, we are intelligent and we are fleeting. It's our intelligence that has finally allowed us to even breach the ocean, and only years after that, just a few years, maybe less than a hundred after breaching the ocean, we are in space. We are very rapidly becoming a contender on the galactic stage. Now, the name of the ocean itself was just one of the auto ones, and I just kind of liked it. That's happened a lot to me recently, so that's what we're going with. Before I forget, Aquatic City appearance, I always forget that one. And we are, of course, going with the Aquatic Ships. It's weird being able to actually cycle through all of them, and I've got to be honest, the aquatic one may be my new favourite. We'll have to take a closer look once we get into the mode itself, but yeah, look at these. These are fantastic. I love that. It's a little ocean. That's so cool. Every ship has to have water in it, of course, which makes it so weird and squid-like. So, the jelly brains are ready. Let's get into the game itself. So, of course, we're going with maximum difficulty of the crisis. We'll have it 100 years early, as we tend to do. A medium galaxy to stop any lag, and our intention is to make as many worlds ocean as possible. So we begin. Hey everyone, future Lathrix here, even more future than the previous future Lathrix, and certainly more future than the past Lathrix. So, I'm here as tradition with these four playthroughs, just to say that I really enjoyed this with the DLC and everything else. It was a serious undertaking getting this full playthrough together. Hopefully it will be out before the weekend already, because I have just been recording this solid all week. It's taken... <laughs> basically a week worth of recording so i really do hope you enjoy it and as usual i am here to say if you do like the videos then a like and a comment interaction massively helps since these long form videos can be poison for the channel but they can be amazing if interaction is okay i hate shilling this content but i love recording it so i'm always here to say that so i really do hope you enjoy but before we do get in um I, one last thing past lathrix did accidentally leave scaling difficulty on for this run i was originally going to turn it off i actually prefer scaling difficulty but it does make the early game a little bit easier essentially all those maximum difficulty buffs aren't instantly given to the other empires they're slowly added until the end game which is 2300 so they still get very strong very quickly but past lathrix completely forgot to turn that off so, it's not really going to affect the run too much, but do bear that in mind, because I'm honest like that. So, into the run. And so we begin, in the very top of the galaxy. Joy to those who possess the wisdom of acceptance. So goes a common proverb in ocean society. The bounty of life is all around, once one learns to appreciate it. In such waters, long have we prospered. But our elders do not sense the stagnation. They confuse our survival instincts with impatience. If we do not seek change, change will find us, and we will be unprepared. We cannot be alone in this vast universe. To keep our home, some of us must resolve to leave it. Our descents into the abyss have proven worthwhile. Unworldly wreckage, perilously, perilous, perilously, you know what, I'm leaving that in, retrieved, precipitated a torrent of technological breakthroughs. At last, we are ready to journey beyond our oceans, to explore, to see, to learn, and to protect, and to get words wrong wherever we can. So we begin. 
now beautiful size 30 ocean world, which is lovely. So ocean paradise, extra happiness, extra pop growth, and resources from jobs increased by 5%. Few worlds boast conditions so fortunate. At the top of the planet of this planet's food chain, there is bliss. It's rich, flourishing resources could potentially last an eternity, if properly managed. Especially now we're at the top of the ocean. In the depths, it was a different story. And we have extra crystal mines we can have. And let's have a look see our jobs then. Let's let the uh, month update. So we have, yeah, the anglers here, which provide 2.5 trade each after everything has been applied and then do we also get the pearl divers there okay so they are like this oh, that's so much trade value that is beautiful it really is so each of these then is giving yeah loads absolutely loads of resources from the agricultural districts that's probably going to be our main economy honestly just the pearl divers and the fishermen but we'll see maybe i'm overestimating how powerful that trade is but it looks really good honestly uh, let's go with tech, let's go with that. I actually don't know which ascension we're going with. I might go with psychic. Um, I haven't gone psychic in a while outside of the Katzen one, which should be uploaded before this. Um, so we shall see with that. Yeah, I actually, actually expected a little bit more than that with um, those jobs, but that's fine. So yeah, Clerk would give us 5 trade value. These are only giving us 2.5, but giving us 11 food each. I mean, that's a lot, right? That is a lot. Probably don't want any technicians. Probably want it more like that and then start building another of these. You know, I think I am overvaluing the uh, the pearl divers and the anglers. Just looking at the stats of them, uh, especially when compared to the technician's energy, I think they are extremely good, especially since how many you can have, but I think I was instantly overvaluing them a little bit. I'm still going to focus on them because I want to. Also, are we currently set to decadent? I don't think we are, are we? Full season. Oh, no, we are already decadent. So, the decadent lifestyle. Everyone. Wow, that's a huge amount of up upkeep. Okay, it's not as expensive as Utopian Abundance, unless you're a ruler, in which case it's more expensive. It gives the same plus 20% happiness. But, um. Yeah, you don't get the unemployment thing. Ooh, wait a sec. Pop effects plus 20%. And there's 20 already on everything. So, it's not plus 40, then, is it? That's clearly not how it works. No, just plus 20. Okay. But that means you have a lot of happiness. Um, if we get some more amenities, which we can get through the... Oh, don't get them through the Pearl Diver. Some more clerks. Remember, we are repugnant. That's why I, want, I didn't want technicians. I wanted more clerks because it's going to be quite difficult to get all those amenities sorted. So I think expansion, as per usual, and then straight into Merchantile. And then... Probably prosperity. Yeah, go down all the greed routes. So expansion, mercantile, prosperity, then probably either harmony or domination. You know I haven't done this for ages. I just kind of stopped doing it after all. Oh, I do love these. Yeah, the Corvettes. I love how these look. Love the inflictors. You know what? I like those too. I didn't think I did it for a second, but no, I like those. But yeah, uh, we're going to strip down the ships. I normally don't do that anymore because I just haven't found the bonus it gives worth a little bit of time but i really want a very quick expansionistic start this time especially since we're going to have to try and get all of these started as soon as possible it's weird me building more hollow theater straight away because well we are decadent and not only are entertainers entertaining they increase pop growth so they're um they're, they're, they're useful they they do things they certainly apparently do things now oh we haven't had this event for ages a broken union so with this, we get to become a symbiote. Oh, well, we get a symbiote. We're going to attach slugs to our brains, essentially. And those lovely slugs then give us all sorts of lovely bonuses, even if it does slow down our pop growth. Now, the entertainers really don't give us that much extra pop growth on the side notes. It's 1% each. But I do really want to, to rush Unity anyway, so I thought I may as well. Probably should just go with the monument. But yeah, I do really want some of these traditions already sorted because they are really good for our empire. I also need tech. Uh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to rush. I rarely do a full unity rush. So you know what? I'm going to build. No, you know what? I'm going to put down another holo theater. Let's get plus 20% happiness. Let's try and get. Oh. Never mind. We're already at 100% happiness. We are a really happy decadent species. Also, got, got quite lucky of worlds here. We've got two tropical worlds because our guaranteed are these two arctic worlds because of our origin. So very lucky there. Stronger. The game is Let so happy with us being back. I love it. 
back to the vanilla game. So, we have Alien Logs, which will unlock the Rubricator world. We have an Ocean World over here, which will give us all the bonuses from our Aquatic. Uh, sadly, these Tropical Worlds don't give us everything. Uh, since if we take a look see at, at Aquatic, it's plus habitability from Ocean. And then housing usage is also reduced. Yeah, this is all just Ocean. But we're still decent on the typical worlds as well, because of habitability and everything else. But that is lovely to see. So that's fantastic. So we have a great... Uh, a great precursor. We have the Rubricator soon. We have a few worlds straight away. There's little else I could really ask for, to be perfectly honest. Hydrocentric. No longer shall we settle for good enough replacements for our oceanic abodes. No planet shall be deemed fit for colonization until it has been thoroughly inundated. Ocean terraforming cost minus 25% allows for the construction of ice mining stations on star bases, which enable the expand planetary sea decision on ocean worlds. Species with aquatic trait, like us, gain 50% greater benefits for living on ocean worlds, but penalties for living on non-wet worlds are likewise amplified unlocks the Deluge Colossus weapon, which of course means we need the Colossus Project, so that is definitely what we're going with. Now, I'm tempted right now with Interstellar Dominion. I would love to grab more space right now, and you know what? I always go for Technological Ascendancy first, so let's go with the fun. I know that a lot of people write that quite lowly, and honestly, I don't blame them, but I really, really, really love that trait, because I like the really greedy starts, just grabbing everything, not thinking about these silly things like choke points, and just taking everything for ourselves, because that's the kind of weird person I am. Gotta say, I do think that the... Aquatic science ships may be my favourite, honestly. Oh, but I do also really like the Necroid ones, and honestly, I do like some of the stand- Oh, I like all of them. I like all the science vessels, is what I'm trying to say there. I'm honestly not a huge fan of the construction vessels. They kind of look like basking sharks to me, if I'm thinking the right thing, which I do like. But I'm not a big fan of them. I love the stations, and I love the corvettes. For a early little bit of opinion there, and we're about to get robots, which is great. And it turns out, I could have asked for more because we're about to get this world turned into our gas world. We have the whole mushroom event starting, which is lovely. People are very upset right now. There we are. This is getting out of hand, and soon we can do something about it. Which means we can start getting gas from that world. I am also a fan of our wild-looking colonization vehicles. I love new ship sets. They always make me very happy inside. We have neighbours, and because of just how many envoys we have, we rapidly became friends with them. So because of that, we now have lithoids. Also, we're really struggling for consumer goods, and I know I've already said this at least once, I did massively overestimate the power level of the Civic. In fact, I'm starting to think it's not actually that powerful. I really like it, though. I do think it's really fun, but the anglers are great. The Pearl Divers, I didn't realise the upkeep was three food as well. So three food and two and two minerals for 2.7 consumer goods and, and a little bit of fried value, 2.5. There's a half of a clerk. If you compare that, though, with Masterful Crafters, which really powers up your normal consumer good production with tried value and engineering research without increasing the mineral. It's not what well, I... Uh, yeah, I wouldn't really consider this too powerful just yet. Very early opinions. They could certainly change. Now, though, I do have these... Oh, they even like Arctic worlds. That is just ridiculous. Anomalous space -time continuum ahead. The game loves me, apparently. Research... Oh, yeah, we also now have these fellas. So this is the new portrait for the aquatic machines. They are creepy, in my opinion. Yeah, I just get creeped out by that. I kind of like that. Weird. We found an ocean world. The ocean world is now ours. Ooh, pretty. Lithoids again? That is insane. Absolutely crazy. Well, let me just sort out that world now. I would like that, and I'd like that. 
I'm still trying to decide just how aggressive I want to be. Here's the thing. These lovely Lithoids who really like us and have um, gladly gave some of their population so we can take over these worlds are kind of really in the way. And getting past them is super expensive. Do we become hostile soon? Uh, I mean, we're still expanding. We still have some worlds to grab and everything else, like the one over here, but... Yeah, I am super tempted to become aggressive towards them. Now, they are fanatic militarists, so it will take quite some time. I don't really know what this empire would be in terms of aggression. They like shiny things and to grab every shiny thing they can. Their leader is warlike. And the fanatic xenophile isn't so much for us actually caring, it's more for the trade value. <laughs> Look at that, the current empress doesn't have the brain slug, but the, sm the smaller empress, did I really... Why do I always call things something I forget? So, <laughs> the heir is a smaller empress. <laughs> and the name is Voidborn Mary. The, uh, the aquatic names are fantastic, I have to say. Yeah, just look at them. Crazy Morgan there. <laughs> the brain slug host. Oh, soon enough I'll be able to, to convert everyone into brain slugs, since that's really what I want. I can't, um, assimilate people into brain slugginess, can I? No, it has to be actually given to them through genetics, because obviously I want everyone with this, plus 10% research and plus 10% unity is just so good. Well, this is a weird bug. Um, I can't get rid of this transmission. That's it. That's research. the entire bug. We are running out of places to expand. Expanding past them is now too expensive. They are officially in our way, and so we are going to start construction of our navy. A little bit late, but uh, we're kind of rich, actually. Our economy is really booming now, and it's going to continue to get a lot faster from here. And I kind of underestimated the power of the Brain Slug hosts in terms of their leadership roles. Plus 15% research from jobs, which of course will then stack with any Brain Slug hosts on the planet, which also get an additional 10%. They get a lot of research, to the point where I'm starting to think that maybe I should put these as residents rather than full citizenship, because I want to make sure that the jelly brains are always leading us. And I want more brain slugs everywhere. Oh, wow, I didn't even realise that our... Well, yeah, the heir to the throne uh, also gives plus 10%. Yeah, brain slugs. I did not know they were so strong. I really didn't. I always knew they were powerful, but wow, that is really powerful. Also, we're building lots of machines. Actually, how many do I have now? How many robots do I have? I have 25 already. No, oh, and three of the old school ones. Our population should expand quickly. I want so much stuff from you. Oh, I hate the fact that you're fanatic militarists and masterful crafters as well, so you're pretty much... You're holding your own, it's going to take a while, but I am starting to build some fleets. Also, these are the destroyers, which I also rather like. I think I prefer the back section like that, it just looks better. Ooh, I like that one. Probably shouldn't go just how they look, but I might do. We now have our precursor done, which means we have this over here, which means we can turn one of our worlds into a Gaia world. Now the question is, do I want to do that or do I just want to stick with turning every single world into an ocean world? Well, I can only do this every 10 years anyway, so I can't do that many worlds into Gaia worlds regardless. Once we have the Colossus, we're going to turn everything into ocean. So this will only make up a small amount, but even then, the main goal of this playthrough, every world into ocean. So I think we do have to be a bit aggressive soon anyway, because the only way I can do that is by destroying them. Now, what I would like to see, though, is would our angler effect, which only works on wet worlds like tropical and ocean, also affect a Gaia world? So we have a Gaia world now. And nope, no anglers. The agricultural district still just produces the usual. And now we have some of these fellows. Phototrophic. They're agrarian. They're delicious. I mean, they're meant to be food. Really. I'm gonna... Well, actually, you just have guy world preference anyway, don't you? So it move anywhere. Uh, yeah, free workers, I guess. Not anything really too useful for us, honestly. But it will do. It will do. And of course now it's a Gaia world giving us plus 10% from everything. Actually, what's better, Gaia world or the Ultima Ocean? 
plus 15% happiness, plus 10% growth, plus 5% resources, versus plus 10% resources, plus 10% happiness. So this gives more happiness, but less resources. This also gives an extra pop growth factor. And we have unlimited agricultural districts because of... Um, which one is it? Yeah, on Ocean Worlds, agricultural di uh, districts are uncapped. Which means we can have unlimited anglers and everything, which is a ludicrous amount of food. These are a truly amazing job. The pearl divers, I don't really rate that highly, but the anglers are amazing. These can just feed the entire empire so easily. Overall, I think I'd actually rather have more of the Ocean Paradise Worlds, but sadly I can't really do that. And hopefully, though, once we upgrade our species, sorry, upgrade our ascension perks and everything, our aquatic thing will make it even more effective to have the ocean worlds. Because at the moment, what do they give us? It's plus 10% to all the base stuff, and then it's going to be improved once we get that ascension perk. And I don't know if it's just what we have currently is increased or extra stuff. So we'll see as we go, but my plan of turning everything in into an ocean is still the main goal. But now we need some fleets, so we can get some more worlds, so they can see the beauty of oceans, rather than these ice worlds. Normally, I don't like going with the secrets of the different precursors, but this diamond is really useful for us. It gives us a research speed bonus to biology. It gives us this lovely tech... Oh, wait a second. I'll show the case tech in a second. And it also gives us minus 15% terraforming cost. So there it is. So we already have uplift now sorted. Though I don't think... Actually, I want to grab that on. I don't think I have anything to uplift just yet, but that's going to be more useful later. Plus, of course, just get a tech out of the way is nice. But the main reason is terraforming. We want to grab all the terraforming stuff as fast as we can. Time to start creating some cruisers. Which is normally when I start attacking anyway, so... Yeah, need to focus on getting some more alloys, but honestly, having so many species on Decadence, only this species isn't is really expensive. I am not a massive fan of the Pleasure Seeker Civic, gotta be honest so far. It's fun, and it's very much in the theme of things. Ooh, lovely. But, yeah. Ooh. I don't remember this one. We didn't detect life forms below the surface, we detected them in the entire world. The frozen planet is interspersed with micro-thin tubes linked to a rudimentary computer. While the structure is primitive, its gigantic scale means it can probably rival some of our planet's supercomputers in output. Even now, the computer seems to be active, our scientists can interface with it. But since it's so slow, we'd only be able to ask it a single question. Can you solve these equations, giving us loads of physics research? Who made you? Giving us some relics and some society research. What are we? Giving us unity. I want unity, honestly. We grow Will it give me an answer, or will we just get the extra unity? Research well, I'm going to wait until my next uh, Empire Sprawl stuff is built, so it's all nice and cheaper. Lovely, already getting that. Oh, fantastic, getting that as well. That is lovely, lovely, lovely. That's going to help out majorly. Need to start getting some minerals. Yeah, we need to start taking over some of our neighbor's space very soon. Oh, that's interesting. So if you're the Pleasure Seeker Empire, you can't have the guilds. That's actually what I wanted to do originally, because I wanted to have servants. Well, I didn't know that, so I've messed that up. So that is a huge mistake on my part. That's fine. That's one of the things I wanted, but there is actually quite a few others. Uh, the Merchant Guilds, for instance, it really does fit the Empire. Merchants are fantastic for us. I'm going to have at least a few full-on trade worlds by the end. So, that is amazing. Uh, Masterful Crafters is just awesome. It's honestly one of my go-to at the moment. I just really like it. it. I'm not even saying it's necessarily the best choice ever. It's just one I really enjoy. Now, this is interesting to me. Catalytic Processing. This turns food into alloys. It means the ocean worlds, with their extreme levels of food suddenly become more worth it. And it's something I don't normally play around with. I certainly have avoided the more scammy builds with it, though honestly there's no problem with doing that. It's just not something which I particularly enjoy myself. So really for me then, it's between merchant guilds, masterful crafters, because that would fix the consumer goods problem at the moment, because oh my god, our people consume so many, and then catalytic processing, which would just be fun. It makes sense, right? Then all the mineral issues become 
a moot point. And remember, we're going to turn every world into an ocean world, so the anglers are going to affect everything. So we're really doubling down. Oh, it fits the theme better. Fine. There we go. So all the food and everything we collect will be used that way. Intellectual booty. Wow, we're actually on minus food now, so yeah, that really showcased how much how many minerals we were using. Uh, okay, let's start building some more agricultural districts on our ocean worlds, and let's try and collect all that. We don't need it, many more mineral worlds now, then. And actually, so the Pearl Divers, two minerals, three food for 3.5 consumer goods. The Artisans are six minerals for seven. So actually, it's not much of an improvement then, mineral-wise, either, with the Pearl Divers. So we still need some minerals. But for now, let's build up a few more agricultural districts. The galactic community is now in play, and it turns out we are very much alone in this section of the galaxy. All of these worlds to convert. And now that we have basic terraforming, we can actually terraform these things within our territory into ocean worlds before we get to them. It's not quite as good as terraforming once we have them, but it'll work. So yeah, very soon we need to start attacking because I am now super glad I grabbed Interstellar Dominion, making all this cheaper. Since we didn't go with, Z with um, Xenophobe or anything else to help us along. Oh, the old Empress must have passed away, so now we have the new Empress. Glory to Voidborn Mary. Also, we're about to get the genetic modification, so finally everyone can have their little slug in their head. Um, how is that leader a slug host? It's one of our lithoids. Okay, then. Ship fire right, extra evasion, and minus upkeep is pretty amazing, honestly. So really, we want to try and get some slug host leaders. Eh, uh, sure. Soon. Very, very soon. Ah, uh, so here's something annoying. Uh, it's a bug, I think. Apply template. Listen to that. I don't know what's going on there. The current template cannot be applied to any available species, but it can, though. In what way would that not be able to work? So let's say I'm making another template. Would that be able to be applied? Yeah, for some reason... Okay, now I can't apply that one now to the slug host one. I am really confused about this. What's going on there? I can't do that. Yeah, it's our dominant species. You used to be able to do that, and that noise obviously is wrong. Uh, that's actually incredibly annoying. That is very, very annoying. I wanted that on everyone. That also implies that I really shouldn't go down the genetic route, because if there's a problem with this currently, which it looks like there is... Yeah, because look, it, this isn't even through the... Wait, I can change you, but I can't change the brain slugs. Can I apply this like a template? The following unmodifiable tra- Oh, okay. So the brain slug is now unmodifiable. That didn't used to be the case last time I played the brain slug, and maybe that was quite a long time ago. But obviously this noise is- That noise is wrong, at least. That's what made it seem so much worse. Okay. Uh, the flesh. Oh, I want to go down the psychic route. Oh, I can only get hydrocent. Oh, I didn't think I could, get, I could get that that early. Well, obviously we're going to grab that. Ocean terraforming cost is reduced, and now we can make ice mining stations on star bases. We came from the ocean. Our species evolving to be ideally suited to living in the depths of the seas. Even as we take to the stars, we have not abandoned our roots. The water is and shall always be our home. Now our evolution is complete. No longer shall we adapt ourselves to living elsewhere, rather than shaping worlds to suit our needs. As we greet the warmth of a new day, we know that nothing need part us from the ocean ever again. Lovely. Okay, so first of all, I want to check out what the ice mining thing is. Some really, okay, there we go, the ice mining station. This system is, is, is a plentiful source of unexploited, unexploited ice. By setting up a harvesting station here, we could see it you, uh, put to better use, creating a habitable oceans for our kind. My dyslexia hit me so hard then. System modifier, mining station output increased. Unlocks the expanded planetary sea decision on ocean worlds. Requires an ice asteroid or frozen world in the system. 
Can I put it on any of these then? I would like to build at least once. I'm hoping it unlocks it on every system. Yeah, that's only a system modifier for the mining station. I'm hoping the expanded C one can be used anywhere though. We shall see. Okay. Now let's have a, have a look at our species. Uh, the aquatic should have been changed. I thought it was. Species with the aquatic trait gain 50% greater benefits. Okay. So it's now 15% minerals, 15% food, 15% energy. And then plus 15% habitat, well, an extra plus 10% habitability, that doesn't really matter too much. Way less housing though, so that's pretty good. Okay. That does mean our basic um, output is going to be increased quite drastically. Once, once the month rolls around, unless it already has one. Oh, yep, there we go. Our food is now in the positive. Okay. That's pretty awesome. I'd have liked to actually seen it change on here because I'm a dum-dum and I like to have the basic stuff um, shown to me, but that's alright. We really want more of our main species then, especially since terraform... Oh yeah, I can we terraform. You are going to become an ocean world once we can. Ugh, it's expensive. Okay. For now, let's just focus on war. Soon. So soon. Board some mercenaries. We're about to go to war. Am I still gaining gas? Yes, I am. Okay, so let's sell more of those per month. Uh, it's all expensive because I'm moving my fleet out, and as you can see, I am way over my navy cap at the moment. So, let's sort that out. Let's start grabbing some more star bases and some more anchorages. That should be pretty easy to fix overall. And yet, we still need more food. Always more food needed. More anglers, more trade value, more everything. They're probably a little bit more angry at us right now. I just made lots of claims. Hence why I now have almost no influence. I'm grabbing this entire section. And if and if I, if I can afford it before we get there, I'll also grab that world. Come on, hurry up and give me the tech to terraform worlds. Worlds I already have a base on. Uh, just grab all the basic stuff, I guess. Technology secured. Oh, come on, cruisers. Fire your little strike craft. I want to see what they actually look like. I'll stick together still, though. Got a decent bastion there, which should keep us safe. It's actually a lot better than I thought it was. They wish to speak with us. Here come my ground forces. We should be able to win this pretty substantially, honestly. Where are their forces? This, this uh, storm is going to stop us from actually seeing them. They were equal to us until just a second ago, so I sent their forces somewhere, but where? So far, the mercenaries are all I actually needed. Technology secured. Okay, uh, one of the other fleets, can you please go over there so I can see the Strike craft, that'd be great. This is their home world, their armies are weak. Our forces will be more than enough, all on their own. Will I be able to have a slug? Yes, I will. Oh, it's just army keep. Upkeep. Never mind. Butcher it is. Fleet engaged. Give them a broadside. Okay, you go back. Then marauders, you push forwards. Should have done this before, but I forgot. If we can take all of that, that's going to be four worlds at least. Oh, they're adorable. Oh, yeah, I like those. I like the little strike craft. The enemy probably doesn't, though. So difficult to get a good shot of them. There they are. Yeah, they're pretty. Okay, cool. 
There's their forces. Oh, I'm about to lose these. No, go back. Wait, wait until the mercenaries get there to help. Okay, go back. Uh, let's just sit there, shall we? We have taken their planet. Seize their credits. Are they really going to be able to take out that? I guess if they have point defense, that yeah, they have point defense. They're definitely going to be able to take out that. But they're going to take loads of damage in the process, and then we can corner them, so that's fine. You take the rest of these. Ground forces, just bounce around, grabbing everything. This war is pretty much over. They wish to speak with us. At some point, I may have thought that this section was the back and that section was the front. I'm fairly certain, but oh well. I can't afford to make any more claims now at war, can I? No, that's fine. But I can do this. Let's convert... one of the frozen worlds into a Gaia world. So this is the Expand Planetary Sea, and... Ice will be harvested from a system with an ice mining station on the star base, and this will give us plus one planet size. Okay, cool. So, if we start running out of space, we'll definitely want that. Here's hoping I get the galactic marketplace, because I do like my trade. Well, it's costing an absolute fortune, but now I'm finally able to start converting all of our worlds into ocean worlds. Things like the tropical worlds and the continental, it's very, very cheap. But things like this tundra world, for instance, it's very, very expensive. So, I, it is going to take a while to grab all this, and once we have the Colossus with the Deluge weapon, it means we can flood planets completely, so that's what we're after. I want to expand all the way down here, and hopefully by the time we reach here, we'll have the tech for the Colossus. Interesting. Whoa, lots of stuff here. After completing the terraforming product, uh, project, our terraforming specialists have spiked a golden opportunity. The remaining terraforming equipment can potentially be repurposed as infrastructure for the planet. Ooh. Well, I guess for all of them, really. I kind of just want agri agricultural, since I'm turning them into ocean worlds, so... Yeah, I'll do that for all of them. So that's something new. But then this. We have not only succeeded in terraforming this planet, but we have also, we have done something even better. During the final stretch of the process, our terraforming specialists managed to make it a perfect home for our local fauna, creating a moon eerily similar to the home world. Sure. Second home. Extra habitability, extra immigration pole. Huh. That's a neat. Yeah, those were the worlds which are already um, some of the wet worlds. They've just now been changed into full-on ocean worlds. And what I've done as well is I've now set up migration um, controls on every species except for the jelly brains. So any new worlds we get will only be for, I'm hoping, a lot more of the slug brain host ones. So I'm going to only send these to those planets. And hopefully that means I'll we'll get a lot more of them as time progresses. So we're going to try and turn them into our vassal, but also we have got claims all the way along here to here, so we can start finally expanding again, and I'm also trying to claim this world over here. Once they're our protectorate, we can eventually absorb them. We grow ever stronger. Because this way we can stop constantly going to war with them, start expanding again, then eventually just allow them to naturally become part of our glorious empire. We're kind that way. I mean, to be fair, the happiness on our planet is insanely high. <gasps> it's not 100%. It's not 100%! But it shall be. More dancers! I just realised, adding max agricultural districts to these systems is completely pointless. <laughs> oh, I completely forgot. Yeah, so we have, um... On our ocean worlds, we can have... 
essentially as many agricultural sites as the world can offer. Um, normally it's capped with the different features, like for instance, this world can only support five of the generator districts and seven of the mining districts, but we already maxed out, so what I'm doing is pointless. So the next time it gives me that option, the excess one, I will not be choosing the agri- I'm just so sure about having as many anglers as possible and I completely forgot we already kind of are capping out, so yeah. So, um, first of all, engineered beauty. Extra happiness or extra amenities. Uh, I honestly like the bonus happiness, just raw bonus happiness, because getting to full amenities is quite easy with our current build. Then there's this, terraforming complications. Still an ocean world. Our long project on the planet has frustratingly ended in, in a partial success. As the final valleys were undergoing terramorphing, a malfunction occurred in the biomass regulator, leading to the creation of, a of large swathes of terraforming residue. While not dangerous to our colonists, it means that the planet is a bit more cramped for the time being. Eh, as long as it's ocean, that's all that really matters. I can't terraform you just yet since I need the climate restoration tech, which is really annoying. But we are getting there, we're certainly getting there. Oh, that's good. So learning from the mistakes, uh, that's when you remove the debris which was added by the partial failure there. And now I have a little bit of tech towards climate restoration, so that is great. Now, if we can get our science vessels back over here, that would be wonderful. In fact, where are our science vessels? Some of them stuck here? I'm sure we've done this before, honestly. Uh, okay, the rest of you are over here. Let's get to work grabbing all that, and I'll grab these as well in a little bit. A special project is finished. Then we can start expanding naturally again. I really do love these ancient caretakers. Thank you for the extra research for 10 years. Okay, so we're now at 6k research. This is because I've got all the extra building slots from all the different techs. Our food and minerals are suffering a little bit, but our alloys have gone through the roof at the moment, so we can sell those for loads of resources, even if we didn't end up getting the market, which is super irritating. We have all of these construction vessels all nice and busy over here, so we can grab as much as we can until influence runs out, and then we will attack this empire here, which is quite weak, because it keeps being attacked by these two, so that should be a very easy conquest. And, very soon, we can also- in fact, no, we can do it now! We are going to integrate this, so we also have all of this territory as our own, so this is all ours now. Everything is looking fantastic. On top of that, I finally got the psychic tech, so we are, in fact, now mind over matter. Which is lovely for these fellows. Latent Sonic and Brain Slug Host, plus 5% research, plus 10%, and soon we're going to get the full psychic as well. Now I am cur- oh, 7k. Now I am curious if you can get a brain slug host, which is also psychic. I'll wait until we have the next stage, which is really soon, and then we can find out. Okay, we have Transcendence, and we have the Colossus Project, so now all of our leaders of the species will be naturally psionic. So all we need to do is keep on cycling until we get a leader with Brain Slug Host and Psionic, if that's possible. So just, there we go, and nope, Psionic seems to overrule Brain Slug Host. Which is a real shame, and actually I'm gonna start uh, leveling up that leader, the Psychic Spark of Genius, so that's a full plus 20% research speed from that leader. And the second as well, we're gonna get plus another 10% resources on all of our larger worlds, which is fantastic. We are really, really just snowballing now. And I'll breach the shroud in just a moment. Very first time entering the shroud and... Uh, increased lifespans? Okay, there we go. Well, our leaders now have increased lifespans. Oh, okay, so our main leader, our glorious empress, does get the bonus of both psychic and brain slug. 
so do the governors. So that's extra stability and unity, and then also extra research. It's just the researchers, it seems, don't get both. Though I will be on the lookout just in case I'm just not seeing them at the moment. Also, how long until I can claim myself as the custodian? Ooh, lovely. Just need more power. And I do have a lot of envoys. Have I not built the diplomatic thing? I don't think I have, have I? Because I'm a dum-dum. Okay, we're going to try and rush as fast as possible to become the emperor. Well, the empress, I suppose, of the galaxy. Going down the Colossus route also has another bonus. As you can see, I'm now pretty much out of influence, which means I can't really do all that much. I'm expanding now very slowly. Half of these construction vessels are just sitting around, and I can't make any claims. But, once I have a Colossus, I can go on an all-out war and just take everything I attack. So I am building up my forces now quite a lot. I really should move them down here, but we've got some time because I've only just finished off the Colossus project, and I'm still building the Colossus assembly yards. And once that's done... This lovely crackeny thing is gonna go out and drown everything. It's gonna be fun. Uh top one. Wow. Um Once that craft are upgraded, they can jump. We could try and make the free traders over here are vassal whilst we wait. Booty. Try to leave. Ooh, psionic shields. Well, that is a lovely one to get. Fantastic. Well, that was a definite improvement over the first try. Lovely. A free sapient species is ready to join us in the Sea of the Stars. We've uplifted a new species. These little fellows. Which are irradiated. No, not you. Who did I just uplift? You guys. Who are natural intellectuals. Okay, as long as we have the no migration enabled, that's fine. Now we can actually terraform this world, since that was stopping that. And we just got a nice chunk of influence. We try again. Oh. Okay, precognition interface. That's good as well. I mean, I was hoping for a, uh, a covenant, but at least now our ships are going to be nice and psychic. We grow ever stronger. I'm also going ahead and trying to get um, Shard to spawn, essentially doing all of that. So soon we'll have the Rubricator, and we certainly have enough forces to deal with it. In fact, we're now amassing enough force to perhaps just go straight after the Fallen Empire as soon as we have the Colossus. I want habitats and a lot of other stuff at the moment, so I'm not going to war. I'm just expanding into every system I can. That's really all I've been doing at the moment. I've even made some more uh, workers here, so I'm gonna grab all of this. There we go. I was waiting for the influence, and now I had all that happen. We can now just go ahead and do this. Ooh, there's some Zro. Okay, I was actually looking for that. Being guarded by a, a very weak force, I'll be able to send a small fleet over and deal with that. Where's the weakest fleet? I've got you. Cruisers, go! Deal with that. We also have, what's that? The Devourer, I'll grab that as well. There is so much for us to do still. That lovely chunk of space, it's about to expand so rapidly as soon as that Colossus is done. The Kraken is here. And so is a fleet probably strong enough to deal with our neighbours. Ooh, look, a very first Admiral with both Psychic and Slug Host. Fire right, fire right. Sadly, Ego, which isn't particularly powerful, but, um... Good enough, I suppose. I mean, you're very weak. And at war. Your allies are too far away to really matter. Trace for collision. It's off to war with us. And I really, really... Oh, you're down here. Never mind. I am very dumb. I thought that was... Oh, yeah, you're you. I thought you were you. That doesn't really matter too much. We'll send one of the fleets to uh, safeguard down there. It won't take long to get there. Probably a lot faster than they're going to get there, plus we have a small fleet already on its way. It's fine. 
So what I want to do is jump over here, because I really want to test out that Colossus. And look, a vile desert world. We will cleanse the unworthy. Not with fire. But with purifying water. Not right now. You know, no. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. We grow ever stronger. Research complete. Research complete. Already firing at so quick. Planet drenched. As the column of water descending from the Lady Void. Sorry, my Lady Void dissipates. The surface of the planet is wholly transformed, where once there were sprawling continents bereft of water, now there is only the welcoming shimmer of pristine blue ocean, ready to be inhabited. <laughs> oh, <hi> there. Enemy <sighs> I can't fight you right now, it's so fine, our happiness is ridiculous anyway. Guess you don't like me doing that. Well, too bad. This will, this will likely have a shipyard, so I'm to take over that and start colonizing all these. Yeah, so you two go and take on that empire. The rest of these fleets are going down here. Ah, oh, they're already there. That's so annoying. That's so inconsiderate! Oh! Yeah, I already have a pretty strong fleet here. Um, by fleet, I meant to say starbase. Not strong enough, but strong. If I jump you there, pop you there, then what I can quickly do is swap these over to hangar bays. Honestly, anything. Um, point defense has been a big problem this run, so I'm just going to go like this. Okie dokes. Lovely. The rest of my fleet's currently waiting around here because of uh, shards going to spawn in. But you know what? I trust in these fleets. 100k should be more than enough to deal with shard, right? I think so. So I'll send a another fleet over in that direction. Then I can... Ahem. Can I please move there? Thank you. Just grab everything. Ahoy there! Enemy ships have been spotted! I love how fast this thing fires. It is glorious. We have killed so many populations. Ah, uh, I'm sure it's quick. I mean, no one's ever said drowning is painful or anything, right? Please give me a covenant. I will happily settle for 20% research speed, but would have preferred a covenant still. Like any of them at this point, except for um, the Devourer. Since I can't possibly sacrifice our world, since that's the whole point of this run. Also, this Colossus is just so good. Oh, that's annoying. How strong are you now? Okay, so you have some of those up, so you should be better. You better. Taking evasive action. Uh, I need to send another fleet down, don't I? Oh, now his fleet's there as well. That's really irritating. Uh, can you please deal with him? And can you, as fast as you can, head down here? I don't have gateways yet, annoyingly, because I need gateways. We're playing very wide, and that's getting bigger and bigger every every single year now. So, really would like that. Also, need more energy. 
Yeah, our economy isn't as good as it used to be. Well, it is, but it's all going to alloys. That's why right now I'm being able to build the mega shipyard. I'm also being able to build a science network. So, it's all good. And by network, I mean nexus. So this is a problem. I can't destroy this world because it's already an ocean. And yes, I know I'm losing out on so many potential populations here, but you know... We've released the Kraken. It's gotta just do its job. So I am having to make some normal units which I'll be shipping over soon. Okay, took back control of all that. We're now jumping over using the wormholes which they were using to attack us to now defend ourselves. As well as extend our reach. I did try to become custodian. I miscounted how many votes they had, so I've just wasted that 300 influence as well. So that's not very good. Unless I were to destroy you before it finishes, but that's not really going to happen. Yeah, you're too far away. But at least we can destroy the other empires. Ooh, actually, that's a good point. The second empire is one of the ones I'm fighting. But I'm currently destroying you right now. You won't last much longer. Like, at all. Very interesting indeed. I mean... You can't vote if you're dead. Okay, that's all this cleaned up, thanks to my Xenomorph armies. So now we have some worlds which I need to convert into oceans manually, annoyingly. So you... You... And I think... Ooh, my mouse is going really weird there. Nope, you are already ocean. You're already ocean. Okay, all is good then. I don't think I'm going to be able to become custodian this time around. I should have waited a bit longer. Again, I kind of miscounted. I think I just literally missed one of the empires when I was doing that. But, well, in the meantime, I am causing horrible pain for those who are voting against me. So, you know, revenge. Please, this time, give me a covenant. Okay, well, we have a chosen one. Wait... Castaway Hendrick. Obviously not you, but I just saw the extra bonus. Um, which leader just became the chosen one exactly? Is the question. Oh yeah, the first stats. Huh. That's probably the worst one to be a chosen one, honestly. Uh, much rather be a scientist or one of our leaders, uh, like our main leaders, but sure. Chosen one is the chosen one, I suppose. Well, I didn't quite catch the Colossus doing its work, but there we go. That was the final world of one of the fellows who dared vote against us. Ooh, lovely. I'm going to be in jump distance straight away of this area. So I'm going to start attacking all these worlds. Now, I have been just grabbing these worlds with normal ground forces, which, again, is the smart thing to do. I know it means we have to pay for the um, terraforming, but we're getting loads of populations each time. But I don't care. I want to use the Colossus as much as possible. I'll use both. That's what I'll do. I will use both. So over here, we're collecting all of this. Then that just attaches to there. We're making some forces over here to take out the Fallen Empire next, after this war's over. So I want to completely remove the Commerce Guild. Then we'll go after the Shard and the Continuum, taking out both of the Fallen Empires. Then we shall see who we want to attack next. Probably the Empire, just to make it all nice and neat up here. Something like that, anyway. I'm also building gateways everywhere. That's where all of my influence is going. I'm building one there, I'm building one down here, I'm about to start building one over here. In fact, I think I just did. And then we need one over here as well, just so we can collect all the trade value and just make just make getting around our ridiculous territory a little bit easier. Because we have a lot of territory. I'll just wait a second. We'll get loads of alloys per month. Yeah, things are looking really good for, ocean, for Ocean's Reach. So many worlds we are capturing, and so, so much of our resource is currently going towards simply converting them. As fast as I can, I'm converting every world into the Ocean World, but of course... Our Colossus is here now as well, so we are sharing these worlds. Half of them are just being drowned, the other are being taken over, just by standard old force. 
So all of this is going to very quickly fall to us. The guild will fall. The rest of the guild over here is about to fall. And I'm sending some ships to take out the Devourer over here. And then all of these little enemies here. So we can... Actually, I've already got a force here to begin with. Yep, okay. We can just take this all out now. Once all that's gone, we can take those systems. And then probably... I mean, you can't awaken. So we really should go after the Xenophobes. They're stronger. But it'll be easier for us to fight them. So we go after the Xenophobes after this war. We'll take out that long before the Endgame Crisis arrives. Then we can take out the Consortium, the Continuum. And then we'll just go after Empire after Empire until everything is purified with beautiful water. Well, here's something I haven't seen in a very long time. The Wraith. It's an incredibly weak um, little creature here, but it does spawn in quite early in its attack systems. But yeah, I haven't seen it in ages. So this will give us a permanent research bonus, energy weapons damage bonus, and energy credits from jobs bonus. Lots of bonuses from the deadly jellyfish. Our landing party has reached enemy shore. We have taken their planet. Seize their credits. We grow ever strong. This will be the final world, I believe, of the Empire. If not, there must be one just hiding somewhere. Yet yeah, there we go, the guild is gone. Also, my Colossus is quite badly hurt, so I'm gonna take that home now. Yeah, definitely, because what I want to do... ...is drown these worlds. Because here's the thing, I want to make as many worlds as possible into Gaia worlds. Gaia worlds, you are not allowed to terraform once you have them. Which is kind of annoying, actually, so we are stuck with a few of the perfect worlds. So I am going to simply drown the core and boundary. We're going to war. Okay, it begins. Now, one way to do this a lot safer is to not go to war with the Colossus, um... With the Colossus type, just by claiming and going to war that way, because then all they want to do is humiliate you. As I've done it now, they're perfectly capable of claiming some of my territory. So what I'm hoping is that our fleets clash very early on. So they can't go around taking everything. Now, thankfully, I am very strong, so it really shouldn't be too much of an issue. Yep, that one there is trying to make a break for it. Can we please get to them before? Nope. That's annoying. Our starbase is lost. Our starbase is lost? What starbase? they already somewhere? They're jump that way. Yeah, I don't know how they could have got anywhere yet. Establishing a new colonial outpost. Okay, on the upside, they split pretty poorly there, so... That was a nice and quick fight. You are going to try and make a break for it to that gateway, I think. So we could jump to the gateway. And go back around. Or at least one of the fleets could jump to the gateway just to guard it. Then the others could press on. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. Put a fleet there. Then the rest of you... Continue there. Our Colossus is on its way. Yep, just got to the wormhole there. So I'm just going to make a jump to make that a bit quicker. Thankfully, now I have gateways almost everywhere. A gateway is being built there. A gateway is also being built here. So we can jump around our territory nice and quickly. Once again, we're going to the Shroud. Please give me something good. Nope. Well, it's the fun one. I mean, we got so lucky with everything else. Not finding a covenant is fine. just sad. I need more energy and a lot more of the stuff. Uh, we've finished with the mega shipyard. Yep, the mega shipyard's finished. So is the science nexus. We're going to go after these fellows after the shards. So I am going to be building up a lot of mega structures anyway in the form of the ring worlds. Since they have loads of ruined ones, so I'll just save up for now. Need more science vessels. There's a lot of stuff I haven't 
survived yet, so lots of it will just random systems, and some of which will have worlds in. And I need to make everything into ocean. I know a lot of people are going to be very upset here. Considering this is such an amazing world with so many amazing bonuses and everything else. And I'm just about to wipe it out. Now, the special buildings will be there available. I'll just have to repair them all later on. I'm also un welding it, making it significantly weaker. But you know, sometimes... You're just going to stick to your conventions. Convictions. It's also my convention. I don't know. I am very tired right now. But I'm just having way too much fun. Drowning everything. And then... Goodbye to your other main world. Is this all they have? Ooh. Lovely. But... Nope, must have another world somewhere. Oh yeah, there are a few worlds over there, that's fine. I have a seriously nasty fleet over here, and they'll just take those normally. I have worlds everywhere. I did not think that's so many worlds. Ah, there's a small fleet there, okay. We can deal with that quickly. Well, I'll take a moment. This will be a lot faster than the one with the shard. Sure. Just because they only have one actual active system and everything else isn't really guarded. Be annoying if they all split that much, though. On the upside, once I take over the system, they are going to instantly lose. And we do have enough that we could probably just jump in their way and stop them. Ooh, didn't expect that. Um tell you what, you as well. Our star base is lost. Our star base is lost. Fleet engaged. Give them a broadside. Fleet engaged. Oh, I didn't realize I accidentally brought the shrouded avatar here. Well, he got the job done anyway. And that's really it. Our ground forces are going to land now, and they'll make sure... Uh, yeah, just very short work of everything. I accidentally sent the ground forces there. Whoops, a daisy. Ah, well. That was a nice easy fight. Then back to taking out all the regular empires. Okay, we have a presence. Yes, that is exactly the one I wanted. The Covenant with the Instrument of Desire. It fits our empire perfectly. It's all about acquiring Shiny's glory to Slanesh. So, that is what we have. The Covenant is formed with the Instrument of Desire. Eventually we'll have some negatives from that, but we get a plus 10% to all resources. Obviously that is a very, very big deal. We grow ever stronger. And the Xenomorphs are slowly finishing off the last of the robots. So now we have these ring worlds with so many jobs. I've set every single species now to no longer have migration controls. So from all of these worlds, they will slowly start moving over once that takes effect after the end of the month. So now it should say, yep, 5% chance, and I can speed that along, but it should be fine. Because I'm also going to have loads of other ring worlds as well. Although I can only do two at a time. So that's where all of our alloys are going to go now. I uh, don't need influence for that, which is great. And could you please go and capture this world? Which is already an ocean world. Lovely. And you. Grab that. Finish off that. I'm sending some fleets over here. I'm going to deal with the marauders first. Because they're annoying me. So both of those Marauder groups are going to be taken out. I don't know if there's another one somewhere, but they're the ones I can see. Research. Then back to war. Okay, the next war is now on. We are fighting the Commonality and also the Empire, since, well, they're apparently bestest friends. Of course, sadly for them, I'm bestest friends with 
various forms of weaponry. So we're going to go over there, attack that, you attack over here so we can have a bit of a pincer movement. There is a few stations, so I'm probably going to lose some systems over here, but then gain them back pretty quickly. If you two merge, you can actually rush over there and try and stop that. We have fleets moving down here, because I do want to go after the Alliance after that, so I want all my forces ready to jump over. And we have the Colossus, which is going to head over to this one. So I'm going to completely drown the Empire and normally take over the commonality. Void superiority. Let's have a quick look-see then at our aquatic juggernaut. Ooh. That is very pretty. Look at you. Okay, go to another system which is a bit less intense, though. Do you want to take a quick look-see at that? Our tech right now is starting to skyrocket. I'm really pushing tech on pretty much every world I can. Um, so loads of consumer goods are being made. I'm making sure to get loads of gas so I can upgrade all of the uh, tech world's buildings. And yeah, we're going to probably hit... My goal is to hit 40k before the end-game crisis per month. I have done a lot better than that before, which is weird considering how much space we now own. But I guess I am also drowning every possible worker because I am a good person. Something, something, purification, something, something, water. Something. Something. Come on. Something. Oh, I could watch that all day. And for many, it's the last thing people are going to see. Okay, you get over there. Uh, how did that fleet get there? How'd they get past me? Oh, there's a station over there. Is that annoying? Okay, Q2 split, please. Go and deal with all of this. Oh, I did it in the wrong order. I'll swap that in a second. Smaller fleet. Sorry, larger fleet. Oh, no. Actually, basically the same. Because I split them. It's equal. I'm a dumb person sometimes. Oh, I need a science ship as well. Sometimes wars can be so irritating. Okay, I don't think it's my favourite of the Juggernauts, but it's definitely up there. Very close. From enemy Rex seized. Yeah, I really do like that. The L cluster opened, and thankfully it was just the adorable little L Drakes. Victory! Drink up, my loyal crew. Technology secured. So that's cute, but also it means that there's no actual worlds in the L cluster because uh, the nanite stuff didn't spawn, so that's fine. It's both good and bad. It's bad because, well, less worlds for me to conquer. It's good because it means less worlds I'm going to have to terraform and sort out. To achieve my goal of oceanic perfection. Meanwhile, drowning. How do you still have. Oh, you still have one more world. This empire just refuses to be erased. It's very annoying. It is rude, honestly. Okay, over here, we've drowned almost everything now. The Colossus is moving into the next world. Then we're going to... Ooh. Yeah, that Gaia world will be drenched as well. Can we... No, it has to be... Target is neither within our borders nor owned by primitive or hostile... Can you drown your own worlds? You see, I've been thinking, which is a rare and truly horrible thing for me. I've been thinking what we could do is... Requires a loud policy as pops lacking the aquatic trait will be killed. Allows what allowed? You know, what I was going to say is, I'm thinking what I could do is move all the people off the Gaia worlds onto the Ring worlds, stop it being a colony, then drench it. That way, all of the Gaia worlds will be converted. Now, I can't do the same to the Relic world. I think, because it's classed as artificial now. Why should I? I don't know. Ah, oh, it's gonna be so expensive to find out, though. Look at how much influence it is to move one pop. It's 25. 
Uh, we'll see later. We will see later. Right now, focus on this. But yeah, I'm probably going to drown all the Gaia worlds I have. Turning them all into ocean worlds. Huh. Hello there, Great Khan. We are already in your system. Hmm. We may lose this fleet. Which would be very annoying, to say the least. Need more of everything, please. Thank you. Let's just uh, tip it more in our favour, shall we? Oh, it's so expensive! There we go. Fine, all the alloys. Wow, we need more res rare resources. We are making so much gas, <laughs> which is fun to say. But um, apparently we need more. There we go. Now our strike craft are brutal, so here's hoping they have very few um, bits of point defense. Come on, single fleet, I believe you. Nope, stop focusing on others. Just focus on what's currently attacking you. The things in your face, make them not be there. Our landing party has crushed the Finally, we just, we've killed the Empire. Yeah, there we go. The great card is gone. Intellectual booty. Sigh. Okay, we'll deal with you in a little bit. We are still at war with these guys, aren't we? Yeah, okay, so I'll take up that on the way. This will be the next empire probably to go down since uh, it takes a long time for our Colossus to really get anywhere at the moment. We've drowned so many worlds. I have plus 21 influence. I have never had that much influence before. Um, obviously, we have will to power. I've got obviously things aren't even on yet. There we go. We have will to power, and then I believe I got the plus thirty percent from the psionic one. Yeah, boon of the shroud, and then of course I am now the glorious custodian of this galaxy, soon to be emperor, but right now just custodian. Will I ever become emperor? Wait, if I'm an emperor, I can still go to war with other empires, right? I can't remember if I can or can't. Uh, maybe I'll just stay custodian forever then, as long as I get the uh, super fleet, I don't really care too much. And the influence is a nice bonus, obviously. Can you please get there? There's a Gaia world we need to drown. Oh, did I make it in time? Good, okay. And the Elk Cluster's going to be mine as well. Yeah, all is good. There's only four more empires left after this one. They're all in a... Well, these ones are in... Oh, there's another one there, actually. So it's five in total. These four are all in the Federation. And, annoyingly, they are at war with the Nations. I was hoping to take out the Nations next. Then it's just this little pocket of resistance left. I may have to go to war with everything again. Which is kind of irritating just because of the micromanagement aspect of so many ships everywhere. But that'll be fine. Actually, while you're there, let's deal with this as well, since there are worlds here. There's a Tundra world, and that's it. And, of course, it's the Enigmatic Fortress, which I believe we need construction... Oh, wow. I can't remember what we need, actually. Do we need ground forces? Well, we have a science vessel. We'll have ground forces. I'll get everything there. Hopefully, I remember how to do that. I've done that so many times. It's kind of muscle memory now. So, I'm hoping I still get to choose all this correctly. Okay, we are now at war with pretty much everyone except for this machine empire, because apparently there was an uprising. Yeah, you still don't like us though, since you don't like us flooding every single world we can see, I imagine. Which is understandable, which is understandable. Grog Guzzler's Yards. The Star Nation, formerly known as the Empire, has been destroyed by its enemies. And we also removed the Empire from over here. You guys are getting really irritating, you know that? 
Maybe I should have just got some Corvette fleets, used them instead, because, yeah, the battleship fleets aren't exactly quick. But that's it, uh, just slowly crushing this group over here. Like I say, that empire just fell, and I think I've done all the steps correct over at the fortress. We're now doing home system research, which I think gives us the three options, like middle end, yep. It's the middle. There we go. Engineering research, the encoder, and the decoder. I forget what these do, I know they're good, but I forgot they actually do. Extra evasion. There's a chance to hit. Yep, that's what I want. And now, survey the system. The enemy is in our sight. And one more system will Fire be ours. Ready. Now over here, I want some more gateways. Got this one, which is disabled. And I'm going to put one, uh, I'm going to say here. And then the other fellow will jump, and I'll put one down here as well. I've got to start getting rid of all the stations. The reason why we have minus energy at the moment is because we are massively over our station cap. And the gateways will be grabbing all that lovely, lovely trade value anyway, so I don't actually need them above all these planets. I'll sort the rest out soon. Yep, you're sitting there, so I can't use the L gate to jump around. We have pretty much won this. Be nice to see if we can actually win the game before the endgame crisis arrives. 15 years. If they spawn in straight away, I don't think I'll, I will have grabbed everything, but um, if they're a little bit delayed, then I think I will get the victory screen. Thought enforcement. Telepaths monitoring the citizenry for incorrect thoughts will make corrections as they find them. I mean, I'm probably not going to use that, must grab that anyway. So, I've just spent something like 100,000 minerals trying to sort out all the different worlds, because we have so many, as you can see, so many now being built on, things are being terraformed, there is just so much to manage as I take over the last of the remaining empires. Also trying to get my science ships in to finally survey all these systems, so I can grab them with my construction vessels. I have four different gateways currently all going up at once. There is a lot happening, and soon... I'm going to try and remove my custodian term limit. I don't even know if we can be the Emperor if I'm the last Empire. I don't know if that works. So what I might have to do is vassalize. If I've got like a world on its own like this over here, I could remove these systems and turn this world into its own vassal. That way there's another Empire within the galactic community. Because I want to stay as the Emperor. Now, the Custodian? Well, yeah, if I become the Emperor, I'll lose my fanatic Xenophile, and I'll become fanatic Authoritarian. So I'm not too sure there. Wow, this is a serious leader. I may be focusing a little bit more at the moment on my normal ground forces, but don't worry, the Colossus is still getting in a lot of work. See, so this lovely moon here is absolutely fine. It's a beautiful ocean world, but this vile alpine world, well, ever stronger. we're going to make it ever so pretty. Intellectual booty. Our land the end of the mandate. All of my fleets are now being recalled back to the home system, so I can have a quick look see all of them together. Honestly, I am not particularly nervous about any of the endgame crises. We still have 10 years, and this is just what's already here. We have over half of it just scattered around over here. And of course, we do have the mega shipyard, so if I do need to change up the ships, I can do so very quickly. And I'm, I'm actually going to build one other star base as well, so we'll have three star bases here, all for shipyards, and then the mega shipyard itself. I have gateways almost everywhere. I'll put one more down over here once this is done. You're building one, you've just finished building one. So what we need to do now is convert every single world into a glorious, glorious ocean world. Which shouldn't be too difficult, except of course I'm going to have to figure out a way of uh, converting uh, some of the Gaia worlds. So from what I read just then, when I was looking at um, trying to destroy them, we couldn't do it because we didn't have the purge policy enabled. We can't do that because of xenophiles. But already aquatic species won't be killed by the process of the Colossus. So what I'm thinking is we can probably 
simply remove every species on the planet which is aquatic and just throw them down on these ring worlds without having to abandon the colony, which is the huge influence sink at the end. It's still going to be very expensive per planet, but I only have, like, I think four or five Gaia worlds to do that with. And, of course, the, uh, the Relic World as well, which I've stopped converting into the Arcology Project, since I don't know if you can flood an Arcology World. So, yeah, just need to do that. And also grab all the remaining systems. There's not all that many left. Okay, you're about to build a Starbase. Gateway, rather. My mind is melting. It's currently like 3 a.m., but we're so very close. I've had so much fun with this run. It's been more steamrolly than usual, but I do love all the aquatic stuff, so yeah, been having so much fun. So, the influence needed to remove all the people from these worlds is utterly absurd, and I have too many of them. So, what we're going to do is something I didn't really want to do, but well, it's the only way really of doing this and still finishing at some point this week, is I'm going to change our Pleasure Seeker Civic for this one here, which I never pick, but now you don't have an influence cost for pop resettlement, except for colony abandonment. Now, the other thing you can do is you use a transit hub above the world, which increases the chance um, the unemployed move off the world and then just disable everything, so no districts, no buildings, and they'll move off. But I've done that on the One World, and it's still taking absolutely forever. So we're going to do this, and then in, is it 15 years? However long it is, I'll then swap back. This shouldn't really affect us too much, honestly. Our happiness is really good on our planets anyway, because of our leaders. And, yeah, I don't think the extra happiness is going to be too, too bad. I'll just swap everyone over to, um... To, not Chemical Bliss, to Social Welfare instead. So that's plus 10 rather than the plus 20. So that should, yeah, that should keep the stability up and running. I think. So yeah, that does indeed work. All of our people have been moved off this world, at least all the ones without the aquatic traits. And now it's going to be purified with water. Ah, I should have left a building on to see what happens. Well, I'm going to find out next time. Because remember, I removed all the buildings and everything just to see what happened uh, for our people. Since they all moved. So, next up then will be this factory world over here. Just right next to it. So, I'll keep the buildings on and see what happens with that. The guy world has been converted. And, to my surprise, the buildings are intact. Okay, good to know them. We don't really need to do anything except for move the people off. They'll slowly come back as um, as the jobs will be available. Okay, well, I'm getting more energy than I've currently got for that. Really should just start auto-selling this stuff because we have loads of stuff to spare. There we are. And I'll move over the, all of these to one of the ring worlds. One more. Now perfected. Gee, I wonder if we're going to win this. There we are. So that was the expansion of the Galactic Defense Force. So now we can make up to 800 in our fleet, which is great. So we're going to go way over a mil there, fleet power. It's almost 2,350, and amazingly, the Unbidden haven't spawned, which is actually kind of annoying, because I did finally go ahead and convert all of our ships to using the Archimisers, which isn't too bad, I guess. Wait, am I using the... the the deflectors? Why am I not using the sonic ship? Oh, I added that to the other ships, but not to those, because I'm a dumb dumb. Okay, I'll redo that in a second. But yeah, we all have the Archimedes right now, which means we hard counter the Unbidden. We are okay versus the Scourge, and I can't fly from me ever remember the contingency. I know they have good shields, but do they have good armor and good hull? I don't remember. So that's what we're going to stick with. We're just focusing on energy weapon damage as much as possible and um, strike craft damage, so we should just be glass cannons, but the damage is going to be immense, as glass cannons kind of hint. Technology secured. Okay, this one will be a bit easier since this isn't actually inhabited yet, so that's the ocean world there. I've double-checked that all of the worlds which aren't currently Gaia or Ocean are currently terraforming. Do we have any more Gaia worlds left before I start upgrading all the, the different worlds again? Okay, so we have this one over here. And they put on my favourites, so I should remember it. Oh, you I forgot about, since I was checking on that. You're changing. You know what? 
I know I always like to do these first full playthroughs out, uh, without any mods, but any kind of UI mod right now would be fantastic. There's <laughs> so many worlds, so much scrolling. I'm going to break my mouse at this, uh, at this rate. Okay, you're converting. So it's just those two Gaia worlds? Is that one Gaia world left? I'll double check afterwards, obviously, but we're really close now. There is new information in the situation log. Okay, um, as early as they could... This is so weird. Okay, so this run, the Unbidden didn't spawn early at all. And they had many years of chance to do so, because I got jump drives really early in this game. But the <laughs> the Scourge, which... Oh, I guess no, because they've changed all the different uh, rules, haven't they? The Scourge used to be, before the endgame crisis, true randomization. They used to be the backup crisis, essentially. The longer it took for the crisis to spawn, the higher chance it would be the unbid sorry, it'd be the Scourge. So the Scourge would generally be the ones which show up a lot later. Uh, but now it's more random. I guess they can be early, so... Oh, they don't have a chance. We have gateway coverage all around the Rim of the Galaxy, and we have, honestly, a fleet strong enough to deal with the main fleet. Which is fine. I mean, again, this run wasn't, wasn't really about the endgame crisis. We got a super strong start, and we just dominated, and we got to see all the aquatic stuff. So I'm more than happy this time to just kill the scouts. Normally, I let them spawn in because it's more fun, but no, we're going to just crush the scouts because, for once, I have gateways everywhere. Except for this one little area here. Wow, I found, like, the one spot. Why do I have no gateways here? You would think I would. Oh, no, we have one there. Never mind. <laughs> we do. We do. Let's put in another one, though, just for fun. I'm now refitting the ships. Just to begin with, I've just changed back to the Tachyon Lancers. Uh, I will be swapping to full armor after that. So with the Tachyon Lancers, the Archimitters are good versus the Scourge because they have more armor than they have hull. So of course you're ignoring all the armor, that's great. But the problem is the other weapons you have don't ignore armor, so you tend not to be able to kill all of that hull as fast as you finally melt through the armor, and then there's been no point of going straight for the hull. So the extra damage to melt through both tends to beat that, at least... That's what everyone's told me, and looking at the, the maths, that is pretty much accurate. Plus, I just prefer how these things look when they fire, to be perfectly honest. I'm a simple person. The, the shinier laser makes me happier. Psionic. Uplifted. Brain slug. Intelligent. Plus 10, plus 10, plus 10, plus 10 to all research jobs. Glory to the jelly brains. Shroud Decadence. So the Instrument of Desire is finally doing something, and it's just increasing consumer good upkeep on this world. The population of this planet has turned to decadent consumerism, desperate for exclusive foods and exotic wares. This is undoubtedly the doing of the Instrument of Desire. Compare that to things like the Eater of Worlds, or whatever it's actually called, the Hungerer, who will occasionally just eat one of your worlds. You know, just remove it from the game. And that is it. Uh, every single regular world has now been converted into an ocean world with no exceptions. Sadly, we couldn't get to the L Cluster and terraform these worlds, though. The ones which you normally can, the purple ones here, the nanite worlds, because we didn't have the, the nanite events in the L Cluster, which means we still don't fully understand them, so we just can't terraform them. Unless... Can our Colossus, who's finished over here now... No, can't. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, so we are done. We are actually done. I guess there are some worlds which are classed as terraforming um, candidates, but they're hard to find, and honestly, that wasn't part of the challenge, it was just all the regular worlds, which we've gone far and beyond to do that, so now it really is just a matter of waiting for the crisis to finally show up, which it should do eventually. Hitting over a thousand trade value on some of these worlds now, thanks to the glorious galactic stock exchanges, if I can say it. Yeah, I'm just waiting around now. Not much else to do. This friendly asteroid has reminded me there is one more world to purify. This Gaia world with the primitive civilization on it. So, let's get our fleet on over here. 
Can I? Yes, I can drench it, because apparently, despite being still normal xenophiles, we just don't really care about the lives of primitives. Intellectual booty. Where's Astroid going? Intellectual um, I guess the asteroid really didn't want to hit the world after all. It's a nice asteroid, apparently. There we go, though. One more ocean world for us. Okay, it's been like 10 years now since the uh, event started, but it isn't doing anything, so I had to go to Google and to the forums to get this. Shows how bad I am with commands. I can't even remember the really basic ones, but this should spawn in the Scourge. New information in the situation. Or never. <laughs> okay, maybe not then. Ah, maybe not then. Or maybe yes. Okay, so they have spawned in now. To the one place that has very little uh, gateway coverage, because of course. It said never. Okay, sure. Uh, but this happened straight after, and normally it says approaching the rim, and then eventually it'll tell you where they're going to spawn in. This time they just appeared the next month, so I assume, despite saying never, it was actually saying soon. It's one of them weird things, isn't it? Okay, so if all of you can please get over here, it would be absolutely lovely. Um, how do I get here fastest? Probably you? No, I don't actually know. How do I get here quickly? Uh, I guess there's a gateway there. Uh, oh, they're stuck. Look, they're all completely stuck to here. Oh, okay, yep, yeah, they're doomed. Then I'll get all my fleets there and just wipe it out. I mean, they're doomed anyway. I, I have one fleet here, which is two mil, which is higher than their first for few waves, and I do hard counter them. And we also have a Defender of the Galaxy, and we have an economy so I can respawn my ships very quickly. Rebuild is Research the word there. Complete. But they're just doom doomed. And I have an adorable little um, juggernaut just following along. Yay! Oh, we still have the shrouded avatar! Oh, who's a strong boy? Yes, you are. Will we kill them all before they can spawn in the next wave? I think we will, we, I think we will, but we'll see. Intellectual booty. So, although we are getting way too close to them, because the Scourge love their missiles and strike craft, which is a, a huge bulk of their damage, our strike craft are able to take those down, and so they're not doing full damage. In fact, oh, we can't check. That's mean. Maybe we need to do some research on that. But I'm fairly certain the Swarmlings do have the missile at least. Then they have just like the Acid Blast, which is a normal attack, which can actually get through the strike craft. Okie dokes. And the final little swarm over here. Technology secured. Was that it? We done? Intellectual booty. I think we're done. But I did spawn them in weirdly, so maybe it's broken. But that was the initial wave. Technology and normally secured. when you kill the wave, it's all over. So we're done? Unless we're still waiting for the other event, because normally that'd give you the victory screen. Intellectual booty. Yeah, I'm gonna say we're done there. There's no enemies left, none of them got through the wormhole, which is kind of weird if you ask me, but they just didn't do that. And none of the worlds were lost, just a few systems. Strikecraft, stop going after the transport vessels and take out these things. Take out the swarm. Yeah, the Strikecraft are preventing the bulk of the damage. So even though that was very stupid of us, we still destroyed them. So the rest are basically the same, aren't they? So I could just wait for them to split now. Or I could just Zerg rush into the next group as well because I'm stupid. 
I'm tempted to. Glory to being dumb. Oh, Strikecraft, stop going after the ground forces and the construction vessels. They aren't hitting you back. These things are. Wow, that is so many Strikecraft. I do love Strikecraft, but to this day, their AI is one of the very few things in Stellaris which actually annoys me. <laughs> Just outright annoys me. Last one in the small left leads this time. My navy capacity isn't updating, is it? I was going off that to see how my, to, just to see how many things we'd lost, but apparently that was a terrible idea. The new ships will also be made out of complete armor and no shields because these fellows tend to be very good versus shields. Booty. All hands, fire at will. How did you get there first, Juggernaut? Uh, we should still win against three of these, and they don't have any of the ground forces to distract the strike craft. Um, sure, let's try. Uh, maybe not. I'll have a quicker look. Glad I waited for a second. Now they're split up a little bit. We probably won't engage all of them at once. Oh no, we still did. Never mind. Whoops. There's their strike craft, which gets taken out by our strike craft on the way. Are these fighting? No, these are still fighting as well. Ooh, those actually might do some... No, we've got loads of regular point defense as well. And there's our strike craft going past. This time we have the Juggernaut, so our strike craft are doing more damage because of its aura. And this is the last of their fleets, I think? And there we go, the end of the Scourge. So once again, I'm just going to rebuild these. Because that way, it means we have every system except for the... the Caravan system, which I wanted to keep because you know, trade is good, and every world is converted into an ocean world already. And with that, we are done. We are the Galactic Emperor. We have beaten the Endgame Crisis, which we ended up having to spawn in a little bit earlier than it wanted to be because it was just getting annoying to wait. And we have tested out all of the ocean stuff, all of the new DLC things, along with turning every single world into an ocean world. Everything is beautiful. Everything has been cleansed. Everything is in order, as it always should have been, and always will be from now on. So with that, thank you so much for watching. This was really, really fun. I love the new aquatic stuff, and I'm thinking about doing an RP run with it soon, because this one was definitely more about the mechanics and just seeing how good it was. Next time, I want to go more in-depth with that and just go more... Um, perhaps with the dragon and everything, since that's the other origin, which I'm hoping I mentioned earlier, or future Lathox will mention anyway, because that looks really cool, but I wanted to go with the more standard one for this run. Maybe the dragon will be more fun for a story-driven run of the game. So, my opinion is, um, of the angler especially, because I wanted to give my opinion of this um, later on, I think this is a good civic. I really do. I don't think it's the most overpowered civic in the game. Maybe there's ways to break it, which I didn't do, but I don't think it's the most overpowered. I did underestimate the power of the trade value coming from both the anglers and the pearl divers because that does add up quite significantly which is really good i also kept on thinking that the uh the pearl divers just weren't that powerful but of course the whole point is rather than getting two food jobs which give you almost the same amount of food as the angler it's very close you instead have the angler job which is consolidating those two together along with having the pearl diver which then is just an extra job if you would like it which of course you normally do with the trade value and everything it's not much more efficient than a normal consumer goods producer but you get the trade value out of it which again can be really good especially in a trade a trade value centric empire I really like this. I always find it fun when the base jobs get swapped up, so I love that to bits. It's really good with the catalytic processors. I found that a really good combo. Overall, it was just a really, really fun empire to play. However, I'm not the biggest fan of the um, of the decadent 
Where are you? The Decadent Lifestyle one. I just didn't find that particularly great, in my opinion, compared to some of the others. Definitely more of a themed kind of Civic, and perhaps I'm not using it correctly, but... I mean, I didn't really have Servants as well, because I was Fnatic Xenophile, so maybe that was the problem. Yeah, now I think about it, the Servants would have made it a lot better. Well, overall, absolutely love the, the DLC. I think that this chipset may be my new favourite. It's close to being my new favourite, if not, and I absolutely adore all the new stuff. It's been loads of fun. So thank you for watching. I'm going to stop rambling now because I am going to get some sleep. And if you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stellaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching, and goodbye. We'll be back soon with more Stellaris content. Maybe an episodic one, maybe another full playthrough. We'll see what people want. Goodbye.